What up? What up? What up, y'all? Bank roll Tim better up. All right, so we got this 85 Monte Carlo up in here. It's got these 24 inch Ruchis on it. It's had some work done to it. It's got an LS in it. So we are gonna front frame notch for a full turn. As you can see, that's a pretty fat setup right there. Um, 275.25 tire, but it looks real meaty on there. The front seat look real meaty. I think these wheels are by 10, so 11 overall, all the way around. Anyway, so, front frame notch, front custom alignment. We'll be going on with this thing. She's dirty. She's real dirty. But guess what? It's just going to get dirty with the work I be doing. So, it's got QA1 suspension on it. It's got some bolt-on coilovers on the back. It's got rear woods on it all the way around. The front control arms are the older style with the ball joint with the four bolts. So these arms are actually pretty cool because the shaft on them is reversible to where you can twist the shaft around and it'll put the wheel out more or in more, more camber, less camber, whichever way you want to call that. And we've got some uh, grass on it. Huh? But uh, this arm, whoever put it on, the arm is twisted the opposite way, so it's got this wheel out more. This wheel is on the correct way. But you can see it's turned in, but it's sitting up and down where it should. But the other part is with the front of the car is that it must have one of those uh, BS level one, level two, level three. I'm sorry, all that stuff to me don't work. This must have like a level one, must have like a 350 spring in the front, which is not uh, the correct rate. And what happens is the front of the car will just keep falling and falling and falling. You'll find yourself out there every other day twisting it up more. And if you already had it twisted up and you already had your alignment set, then you got to twist it back up. So you'd have to measure from the ground up to your fender. Then you'd have to check it a couple days later. So in the door, that level, all that stuff don't work. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want no bolt-on wannabe anti-roll bar on the back. Weak. Very weak. So anyways, changing front springs, front frame notch, custom alignment. We're going to do some bracing. We're going to throw some bracing in the frame, uh, in the side rails of the frame. We're going to put some bracing. We're going to put a ladder bar cross member. We're going to tie into the lower torque box. We're going to tie into uh, the upper torque box in the back because it has a very powerful motor in it now. And now they're going to do a power adder and all that. So he wants to be able to tear it up on the streets not worrying about his frame rails tweaking and bending his torque boxes and take a chance of buckling the quarters so first video i always be forgetting to take the videos of the cars when they're down on the ground and go around it and stuff like that you know a lot of things could happen but if there's video proof of this and that and just having the video that the car on the ground you know, no sense in starting the video with the car in the air and this and that, blah, blah. So, front springs are too weak. I already had it up once and I had to stop and put it back down. <laughs> so that's why the front's sitting a little droopy too. But anyways, um, we're gonna go over some work on it that was done and we're gonna take care of the stuff I just talked about. So let me get this thing up in the air and uh, pull these wheels off and I'll get right back out here. All right, all right. Got it up in there. Got the front wheels off of it. Oh, yeah. Like I said, we're gonna have to change that spring because that spring's up too far, and I think it's only a 350. It might be a 450, I don't know. But the car doesn't sit high enough in the front, and every time it's been turned up, it falls back down, so. Front wheel, front wheel, back wheel. Oh, these were on the right side. Obviously, you can see the back wheel was on 
backwards. Oh, and there's some spacing on there too. Uh -oh. Uh, let's see. Rear end. That's stock. Stock length. Rear end. You can see there's no weld. Stock width. But yeah, so you can see the wheel, the wheel going backwards. So many people give me shit about wheels being put on backwards. Meaning, um, when I'm mocking up or I got a wheel set up there and I'm doing measurements and shit like that, it don't bother me what wheel it is as long as it's a back wheel. So people give me shit, but anyways, it's on backwards. So I'm going to turn it around for them. And I seen the spacing on that side. So I wonder, oh yeah, there's the same amount of space on this side too. So I'll get this one off here in a minute. But I figure I'll go over all this. It's supposed to have aftermarket axles. Oh yeah, it does. No Mosier axles in it. There's normally a full date on there, but that says old five. But anyway, so it does have half the market axles in it. It's a seven and a half, and it's bumped up to 28 spline and a 28 spline carrier. So hopefully there's a true track in there. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Oh, look what I noticed right there, y'all. Hmm. That one's loose, not jammed. What about this side? That one's jammed. That one's jammed. These lowers are, you know, not double adjustable. So I don't like that shit. But here's the other thing is there's a zert fitting with absolutely no grease on. These bushings. And the door. I don't like double adjustable is the best way to go. And with big rims, when you got a wheel that fat and you're trying to make room or you need room and you got bushings, you got bushings here, so you got one, two three, four, five, six. So now if each of those moves an eighth to a quarter of an inch, now the rear end is moving side to side. So if your tire clearance or rim clearance is tight, there you go, it's gonna move. Oh, duh, oh, there's even bushings on that side. So that's eight. So if all those move an eighth to a quarter of an inch, that means it's gonna sway, it's gonna rub. Got to have double adjustable with heim joints. Trick chassis. Trick chassis right there. Best arms out there. And I am, well, I'll talk about that later. But anyways, um, yeah, that's what we got going on. So I'm going to get the other back wheel off. I don't have tubing in stock, but I ordered the tubing for what I'm going to do here. So like I said, I got to flex this frame down because it's all bent up see that that's from people jacking shit up from the sides when they don't know where to jack shit up boom i went with inch and a half tubing uh so i gotta bend this down be able to stick it in this side and be back here and get it welded in so i gotta move all this the hose and stuff up out of the way you know i think i did zip tied to something right there or together but I'll get that moved up out of my way. So when I put the tube in here, obviously there's no heat on the top except for on the top of here or in this area. And then the same thing over here, up here. Oh, but there's plenty of room to get that up out of the way. And I can bend that frame down. This side, same thing. But this side, is, that's crazy. That it's bent so bad right here. But I got to get this bent down, 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 down. And you know what? It's gonna be two pieces of two. So the one piece that come from here, inside here, can go right to this edge because you wanna be able to get to those bolts. I was gonna go all the way through here, but, and then I'll put a short piece in here from inside here to in here. But yeah, that's what's gonna go on there. But yeah, as for, Frame notching. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna trim this up. Boom, get it out of my way. Because no matter what, you can see the rubs are, look how far the rub goes. The rub's all the way up here. So, gotta get this out of the way. And this front piece, you can see it's already rubbed all the way. You gotta lose that shit. You got to. Um. 
This Zerk fitting. Got some red grease on it. But I don't see no red grease over here. That one definitely doesn't have no red grease. No grease on it. The ball joints. Let's see the ball joint. Yeah, it's got some grease on there. The boot. Mm. Oh, yeah. Check this out. I don't know if I said this on the first part of the video. But, uh. They didn't just drill and tab. They drilled it and put it on. So, for any of you guys out there that end up, if you drill it and tap it and it doesn't tighten up right or you strip it, there you go. There's your answer. This is a lock nut. So then I don't know what bolt head they have in there. It's got to be a beveled. It's got to be a beveled bolt head, huh? Let's see if we can see the top. We can see it from this way. Oh, it's got to be beveled. Oh yeah, it is bell. So, <laughs> hmm. they they sell bevel bolts. So, if anybody ends up with a problem like that, you can just go all the way through. That top one, I don't think, is a lock nut. But anyways, all right, y'all. On to the next step. Let me get this other wheel off the back. I'll be back. All right, y'all. Getting ready to notch this side right here. I trimmed out the plastic. Of course, I'll clean that up a little bit. Boom. Uh, I got this side. As you can see, it's cut out. But I got that side. Notched, plated in, moved in, all fully welded. And then it was a little rough to begin with. Had a couple dents in it, but um, welded it in real nice and then cleaned up the weld. So, obviously, you know, there's a plate there and there's a plate here. But I'm trying to get all these angles, the paint's still wet, but this is a gloss. But yeah, uh, that notch is done. The bump stop nut, the bump stop is actually gone from there, so this metal don't need to be there. I had to tighten up the shock because they weren't tight. They put the nut on there and had the lock nut, but it was way up here. So this was actually it had when it was sitting on the ground, it had the space right here. So get that off of there. Uh, once again, absolutely no grease. I don't know if I just said that in the last part of this video. The bottoms too. Uh, no grease, no grease. So I gotta grease it all. Uh, again, the back stuff is just off because of the wheels and they had some spacing on there. But I got the tubing right here to go on it for the frame bracing. But yeah, that's where we're at right now on the Monte Carlo. Yeah. We'll be back in a minute. All right, y'all. Here I am. Took the other control arm off. And what I wanted to show about this is that, like I said, these are the older style arms. So if you notice that shaft, this inside edge puts them, they had it the other way. So they had the thinner side. Hold on, I got grease on my finger. So this side is shorter, this side's longer. So when they had it in, they had it the opposite way. So this side was making the ball joint stick out more. So when this car was sitting on the ground, you could see, I hate grease, it's all over my fingers, damn it. So somebody put a little bit of grease in the ball joint. But uh, I mean, all the style arms, just switch the shaft around. Give you negative camber, positive camber, whatever. So took that out, switched it around, about to put it back in. I had tightened up the shock, but obviously I had to take them out because I got to change the spring. I want to adjust the collar down. And this is, I mean, this is just way too much ain't on these guys. And all the debris, you can see all the debris sticks to it. I thought it was like grease grease, but it is anti-seize. It's just got so much dirt on it. But this is just way too much anti-seize. Once you put it, 
the setup in the car so you can adjust the collar out some to where you think it's going to be kind of close so that way you can bolt the ball joint in and then you just put the NICs on top of the fucking adjustable collar right there and when you put it on the threads and go up a little bit but you don't cake it on there as long as when you turn that oh and I just noticed there's no uh there's no thrust bearings so I'm gonna put some bearings on there to make it turn easier but you just put a little bit this is way too much I see people do it all the time they just cake the NICs on there Anti-cheese is expensive, but this is what you end up with, dirt everywhere. This car, I don't think, has even had a full, a full drive, like, down the road. I think Jordan took it up and down the street over there by his shop a few times, but, I mean, it's a lot of debris, a lot of dirt. Oh, yeah. So, I was, like I said, the new springs are right there. They're black. I'll take those out of the box. But I'm going to throw this control arm back on. Uh, again, you see how tight they put this? That's way too tight. So what you want to do is you want just about a finger's width, maybe a half inch of thread sticking out when you tighten this shit up. Because that's what happens. It ends up cracking the rubber. Then it breaks the link. So you can't tighten this shit that tight. And then the shocks too. You know, I've seen people run these things all the way down to where it's flat and you're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to, like right there, perfect. Another, you know, just a little bit. You know, I got pretty fat fingers, but you know, you don't need it to be crushed all the way down. Uh, but yes, this notch is done. And I never put the semi-gloss over it, semi-flat. And this side is done. This side, oh man, it's a little flat right there. It's not as shiny as the rest. Oh, I did run out of paint on this side. But, and you can see how I ground underneath. But anyway, both notches are done. This side, I'll take the ball joint off because I got to take and get the spring out anyway. So, um, see how I was saying about this bump stop? That's the rubber that goes underneath the bottom of here. Um, if you guys got the flat ones, you can put the flat ones underneath here on the arm instead of this big, it's like a big ass nipple style. Um, but yeah, you can see what it did. It smashed it. But that should be coming out. Don't need it. But yeah, this is the next step on this thing. All right, let me get, uh, get that arm back on over there and I'll be back. Bet that up. All right. So, got it sitting on the ground for the first time with the new springs in the front. I adjusted them up about a quarter of an inch. So, 550s again on G bodies for 24s. So, that's with just a quarter of an inch of turn. And it's 30 and a quarter from ground up to the bottom of the wheel well opening. The back, that was the height that was in it. But the alignment is done. I just gotta jam the jam the inner and outer tie rod sleeves with the two crescent wrenches, adjustable wrenches. But uh so yeah, front frame knife done. Uh, I still gotta put some grease on some areas on the front. All the ball joints over control arms. I'll grease it all at one time. The back arms could use some grease. Yeah. Put the wheels on the right side. And then around the other way. But it's all good. Again, now I can get into getting this frame notch cleaned up on the back and get the frame bracing done. Started and done. I know. I've been doing a whole lot of stuff. And there's a lot of time in between these video clips. Only because of all the other crap I got going on right now. But you guys will see. Surely, sooner than later, you guys will see what I've been talking about. All right, well, on to the next step. Get it back up in the air. Get the frame rails bent down and start the frame bracing.
Alright, I'll be back. Alright y'all. Oh y'all. I got one tube cut and in the frame. Car is level side to side. Got that tube up in there. This is inch and a half. And like 130 thousandths thickness. Got it welded underneath. The frame was very, very, very bent up. And it took a while to get it to that. This side over here. Used the pry bar to pry this shit down, but it was smashed up so far. It had this whole setup smashed up in there. I was gonna try to get the tube to go inside here all the way through, but obviously with the bolts for the cross member, you can't do that. So I'm gonna make this tube go in here a couple inches all the way through here. Get it tacked in here. Get it tacked in here. And the levelness from front to back, I'm gonna make match this side. So as you can see, it's a little bit higher back there. And as it goes forward, it goes down just a little bit. Uh, when I do the ladder bar cross rubber, when I come across here, have the bends in it, and I'll run into those off of that. Then when I run into this on my angle, so I'll come off a tube and go right into the corner of this where the tube is going to be. So, boom. so like this side, you see how the gap is. I'm going to run right into this corner with the, the angle tube. That's going to go from almost center, a couple inches from center this way. And I'll show that. Um, I held these up with a piece of tube up out of the way so that way I didn't burn them. Same thing back here on the fuel line. I held it up, I pushed it up, I put a piece of tube in here to keep it totally off of getting the heat from here. I also kept the air hose with the blower on it and I would cool it. If there wasn't anything else random here, if it was metal lines, stuff like that, it wouldn't matter. But since they're, you know, these braided lines, didn't want to burn. Got that all ground up so I can tie into that. That's what's going on with the frame bracing. But again, you seen in the earlier part of the video, this thing was crushed way up in there. So you pull it down. I started with a pry bar and I was able to hook the upper C channel of the frame in there and pry down, pry down, pry down. Then I took the crescent wrench. I was able to grab as far as I could and bend it down just enough to get the tube in there. I'll get the tube in there and then I can use a screw jack up against here to push it up, do a little weld, mold the screw jack, tap it with the hammer, be able to do another weld and so forth all the way down. But yeah, um, this back tire, let's see if it held. Yep, so this back tire was flat. And every time I aired it up, it's in a couple minutes it would be flat so obviously you can't test drive it you know i don't do the alignment and stuff but the car runs in drives can't test drive it with flat so i took this to the rim shop and had them dismount it we found out that the bead was ripped and there was another part of the bead that was flipped over and it was pinched in between the rim and the tire and that's where the leak was coming from we put it in the uh the water tub Put it in there seeing where the leak was coming from took it off put it on the tire machine popped it down the rip that was in the bead there's a good two inches that's ripped where there's a piece missing it didn't break the belts or nothing so we looked in the tire for that piece the piece wasn't there so whoever mounted it knew that they ripped it and took that piece and threw it out so you guys got to watch these rim shops out there don't go to no repair shop. Do deal with an actual rim shop that has a real tire machine that know how to put rims on or tires on the rims. So yeah, well, took care of that, and and I'm gonna finish up this bracing. So I'll get a couple more bars in, and I'll show you guys. Be back. All right. Got the frame bracing done. I missed another step because I was putting the bars in and I just got to going and going. And my fat ass up in here, it's humid as shit. Sweating all over the place. But I meant to put a bar in, do a little filming. But basically the same 
type of setup I did on the black Monte Carlo with the big block. So I tied into the lower boxes, bent up that cross member, uh, side rails on the side. This frame was so bent, which you seen in the video earlier. But I got it down, stitch welded it, you know, didn't fully weld, which is fine. Put the bar in there, like I said I was gonna do. Tried to straighten this area out the best I could. But that's all inch and a half, 130,000. Same thing on this side. This tube on this one on the inside right here actually comes out a little bit longer because of the placement. So when you're looking underneath, you know how the placement of that is. Uh, it's shorter on this side than that side. But all right, I got all that done. I put some paint on it. Still a little shinier than when, what it will be once it's dry. Uh, I cut cut it back, took a lot off, tapped that back in. This side, like we saw in the video, we like seen earlier, there's no, there was no rub mark on this side at all. This side over here had the rub mark. So on this one, I just, just painted. But uh, I rolled the tub back some more and I cut and ground. They already had it welded, so it was already welded. All I had to do was cut it back and grind it I'll probably put a little more paint on the side, but you can see they put a lot of undercoating on this side. I don't like undercoating. I hate it. But yeah, so I got that buttoned up. Adjusted the back shocks. I got them at five and three. Five on compression, uh, three on rebound. The fronts, I think I went four and two. They were set at zero, so I ever put them in. Uh, I haven't looked back at the video of when Jordan was driving it uh, over there at his shop, up and down the street. But I'm pretty sure the front end was going up real easy, you know, pulling up. The alignment was completely off. But that's what it came to me for, was the alignment. And we added in the bracing and noticed some other things and took care of all that and adjusted. So now I'm gonna get these wheels on the back and set it down. Uh, the other day, this car, let's see, when Jordan first brought the car over here, they had used a jump pack to start it, but it had been sitting here uh, a few days, and I reached in there and turned the key, and it fired right up, so I don't know if that was just that battery that day or something, I don't know, but uh, put the wheels on it, set it down, and see if she fires up. It is raining outside, so test drive. I know my alignment's good, my height is good. How I shut the so how I set the shocks, I know it's good. So basically, I'll be done once I bolt these wheels on and set it down. All right, I'm gonna bolt them up, set it down, and get some more video. Be right back. All right, there it is on the ground. It is done. Frame brace, alignment, change the front springs. Car is going to get, I guess, painted and going to Nick in Texas Sound Factory to do what he's going to do to it. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So the tire. The rims are on the correct side now, guys. They put the tires, somebody had the tires, the back rims on the wrong side. Rims are directional, tires not. Oh, uh, the back left tire is holding air. No problem. Still at the same pounds, 35 pounds. Front is at a nice low height. Unfortunately, what I was saying about starting it up, um, I don't have anybody here to drive it anyways, so that way I can film, and it's wet outside, so, but, uh, the battery is dead today, like, it just went on. The other day, it started right up, like, right up, didn't need a jump pack or anything, and I don't have my jump pack here, my jump pack is in my Ford. Yep, I said that, I want to Ford my Explorer. Jump packs in that because that thing has a weak battery and I haven't gotten a battery for it yet because it's top post and yeah, whatever. 
But there it is. There's the Monte Carlo. That's sitting good. The other day I was saying it looked like the top of the tire is out, but I have them cambered in just a little bit. Because like I said, like this car has no narrow to it. So when you have the front wheels perfectly straight up and down, it makes it look like the fronts are out at the top and the backs are in because the axle tube bend over years. So the back wheel has a natural camber to it. And a lot of people are like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? It's a solid axle. Yeah, the axle tube bend. Yeah, all right, well, another video for you guys. And I still didn't lay out all the steps, but plenty of videos out there showing a lot of things that I've done for many, many years. All right, y'all. Roochies. Get you that coochie. <laughs> All right, y'all. Back on 10, bedded up. Monte Carlo. Done. Peace out. All right, y'all. Back on 10, bedded up. We at the end. We at the end. She is test drove. She's riding. I know I didn't show you guys everything in this video. But sometimes I think the videos just be too long. And nobody really wants to watch. But anyways, like I said, quarter rail frame knots in the back. I did have to put, these back wheels had a, uh, a deep offset. You know, kind of like a front wheel drive style. Which as you can see, the fronts are in just a little bit more than I'd like. But stock suspension. Uh... So you could put longer studs in the front, put a little bit of a space around the front to bring the wheel out some, but it don't look that bad. Front frame notch, both sides, full turn. The car is sitting like the, again, stock suspension, so stock suspension likes to follow the, the ground and shit like that. You know, there's no anti-roll on the back, so don't sway around the back. And then sway around the front. It's test drove. I put that. I think I put that video on here just in the parking lot. Uh, and all the wind, the ball. Uh, good little car. Dirty, very dirty. You guys can see that. But yeah, so I'm trimmed in front of the back tire. The shocks do not allow the ass end to travel farther than it needs to, so the tire will not touch the air. As for forward and backwards, um, the lower control arm not really on that much of an angle. We did have to run a one inch cup underneath the back spring. I guess I could show you that. <laughs> Cleaned up, you know, rear end painted it. A little paint underneath. I still didn't take that bracket off for the exhaust, but see the little plastic one inch cup underneath there? I had those laying around. I don't know what I got them off of, but I like to use those for like. What is it? Third gen Camaros. Square body Camaros, Irox style. But yeah, so. What I'm saying about the rim, the rim ended up having a real deep back space. As you can see how it stayed off the frame, the frame notch, but you see how it went towards the front. So I had to run a one inch all star spacer on it. So if we were to, he's gonna go coil overs. So if we were gonna, tuck this it the left tub is bad so it would need a set of tubs obviously and we could bring the wheel in we know that whole inch so then we would be able to tuck it and then it would match how far the front is in so he wants to go coiler we'll do the coilers and anti-roll that'll help the car a lot and then we'll be able to set the ass in down a little bit more i know he's got some music just a box gonna go in there so that'll bring the back of the car down some with stock springs when you put weight in the trunks they come down more than if it was a coil over spring so you know like i can push this thing down you know you can't push a coil over that far that easy the front quick frame notch i plated it with the whole centerpiece in well not too bad and cut the front of the fenders and clears and 
touches just a little bit at full turn on the back sides of and that's you know with the wheel sitting in more oh, i didn't do this on that side so i can see we're all the way up into the little control room now where nobody else does they do that damn step notch in there and then the head of the rim hits it so cleaned it up painted it we did put those all-star ball joints in the front which was able to get the camber up and down and it's got plenty of travel in the front so it rides right it rides smooth my son just drove it down the street he likes on the steering wheel and it went straight the uh, spindles are degree just a little bit you have a little bit of sport steering oh yeah all right y'all better up customs macro 10 um yeah i don't know if i showed the steering wheel it's a billet wheel and it's got the ring on it I don't know why the other day I thought that wheel was black. Mm. Yeah, not a crack. Let's see, not a crack in the dash, huh? No, no crack in the dash. Dude just text me right now. I'm about to call him. Let him know. And he knows the fender needs to be readjusted. But yeah. I do too bad on that cut, y'all. Better it up, better it up. I'm out. Appreciate y'all. This is an 81, 81 colors. Alright, that was...